You don't have electric motors unless you have a cord to get the electric motor to electricity to the motor. Pretty straightforward. However, a lot of motors now are putting in 14 AWG or 14 gauge wire to the motor. Uh, wait a minute. That's probably, if it's any size, that's going to be marginal. It's not a bad idea every now and then to pick up the motor or the wire and hold it in your hand. If that little sucker is, uh, I don't want to hold that thing, it's time to do something because it's, you're going to have a fire in some manner. The, 50, the 14 AWG wire is capable of handling 15 amps. The, 20, the 12 AWG wire, which is supposed to be wired for all plugs, is capable of handling 20 amps. Well, that's okay, but if you're running up at the 20 amps or 15 amps all the time, you're going to get heating. Anytime you heat a conductor, it's going to, the resistance is going to go up, create more heat, until finally, if you're overrated and your fuse is still holding, it's going to cause a fire. Don't ever run a, something on an extension cord. First of all, I, I will not buy an extension cord less than a 12 AWG. And they'll be stamped on the wire. Also, it's, it should be on the label that you buy it for, uh, that's with the piece. And I won't run it over 25 feet. I had a gentleman that I worked with in the scale business, and he kept complaining that his, jack ha his uh, hammer drills were burning out. I said, okay, and why? And one day I was over there, and here he had, a hundred, he had two 50-foot ca uh, uh, extension cables, and they were 14 gauge. I think that might, may even be 16, I hope not. But, uh, and he was running 100 feet. Guess what? The voltage at the end of that, by the time he was running it, was dropping down into the 95 volt range. Well, that's going, the motor says, I want, if you put power to these motors and you load them down, the voltage is going to drop. In order to get the power, the current's going to have to go up. It's when I get current and voltage, I'm more current, I'm going to have heat. I'm going to have a problem. And so what happened? He was burning out the, the uh, hammer drills. I said, how many are you going through? Oh, they don't last about a month or so. <laughs> oh my gosh. How can so I said, quit. Get your, get your 12 AWG wire. Don't run it over 25 feet. And uh, I said, if you have to, maybe go 50, but I sure wouldn't go over that. And talked to him later and he said, I don't have, I haven't burned one out in a long time. So. The 115 volt or 120, and which is, which is correct? You electricians, which is correct? Anybody? 120. 120? Mm -hmm. It's about the same, right? It's nominal. Who gives a crap? <laughs> you know, I mean, bleh. It does vary. That's a good, good one in a bar uh, uh, with a bunch of electricians about uh, 11 o'clock at night. They've been drinking pretty heavy. And throw that one out there and then walk out and just let it go, you know? I mean, it would. <laughs> But 120 volt wiring is going to have three wires in it. It's going to have a black wire, generally, and a white wire, and a green wire. They all have a purpose. The black wire is going to be your hot wire. Your white wire is a neutral wire. Gentlemen, neutral means it doesn't have any voltage in it, right? No way. It'll kill you as well as that hot wire will. Only problem is, it's, it is the return path of the current. And the green wire is, is for your protection. It's personnel protection. We'll cover that a little bit more. This plug here, I bought at Home Depot, and I have on it danger, do not use, danger, do not use on both ends. And the reason I done that is, you can take this, you can buy these at Home Depot, and you can, uh, Wire them yourself. Buy it. And I did. I bought that cable and wired them. Well, I have four of these. Each one of them wired for a different uh, configuration. In other words, this tells you the tester. Be careful. Testers are good, but not infallible. This says uh, 
open neutral, open hot, hot and ground reversed, neutral and ground reversed, and correct. Well, be careful. I reverse, I put the hot on the green wire, on the personnel safety wire. Not only that, it's metal. I refuse to buy one that has metal any place on the outside. Now, if I plug this in, it'll tell me that the hot and the neutral are reversed. That's not true. It's the hot and the ground are reversed. Danger situation, kill you type thing. First, the other thing is, what kills people? Voltage or current? Current, current. current, all right, current is the one. Doesn't take much, about uh, 20 amps, uh, 20 uh, milliamps, uh, 20 amps will fry you. Uh, 20 milliamps uh, with, uh, with over 50 volts will cause your, your uh, uh, heart, well, no, that won't, that'll go up to 40. But the 20 will uh, stop you from breathing. So, uh, I'm trying to think of what that is. Anyway, uh, when you get older, you forget those things, so you just move on. But, um, so with that, I, uh, I suggest that you may not want to think, uh, well, I'm going to test the, the wire. The old electrician, I'm sure you remember that. The electrician's method, always use the back of your hand to test if it's hot. Why? Because if you use the front of the hand, it's going to go like that, and then you hold on, that's no let go. But that's not a very smart thing either. Not, not smart at all. The neutral versus the ground conductor. The neutral conductor is the white wire, and it is just for that purpose, a path. The grounding conductor is for personal safety and is always a bare, green or a bare wire. Next one, please. I already covered the circuit testers. Be very careful with it. Be, they, they are good, but they will not tell you everything. You can get in trouble. In the, metal, in the metal end, just because it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's an opportunity for, for, for conduction. Sure. I mean, I grabbed that little thing right there, and I'm, I'm, why do I need a wire? I got you. <laughs> Test meters. Here's a fluke meter. Fluke 87. You can have a 787. You can have all different kinds. Here's a, another one. This is for measuring the inductance of a motor or capacitance. And, but any one of them, when you're, if I take this meter and I plug it in and I'm here on AC, I say, well, wait a minute, I want to go over and measure amps. I turn it over to amps, check it, and I leave it plugged in. If you're very high voltage, i.e., uh, 240, 110 it probably would not do it, but it might, be careful, I wouldn't try it. But, and you go, oh, I forgot to put the meter on the wrong one. Go back to there. I have films that show where it physically blew the meter apart, blinded the guy, and he will uh, have one eye that's be blind the rest of his life. You do not switch, uh, disconnect it, you're fine. Don't just take and switch those across, particularly if you have much voltage. It's going, when you go through the ohm setting, it's not designed for that. Okay? A fuse is to protect the circuit. Has nothing to do with the motor unless the motor does not have a circuit protection. The fuse is the motor's protection at that point. So if I have a, a 15 amp, a motor is going to draw, let's say the motor is going to draw 6 amps. Well, I'm, I may put a 10 amp, because that's the next size breaker, uh, breaker or uh, uh, fuse I have. I can get some 7.5, but 10 amp. Okay, if I draw 10 amps, I put that motor in jeopardy, didn't I? And I'm going to have a overheat it. So, the fuse is for the circuit. Now, most motors, many motors, not most of them, but many motors have a little red button on them that is a, is a uh, thermal overload. If that, that is basically the motor 
overload for that, uh, for that motor. Okay, and all you have to do is reset it. Reset it, reset it. How many times do you reset it before you say, ooh, there's something wrong here? Two. First time you say, hmm, okay, let's look around, see what's happening, reset it. Second time, hmm, something is, uh, you know, real close together. Hmm, something is wrong here. Check and see if you're, something is binding. Third time, you better, you better check the circuit because you've got a real problem. Okay, somebody asked me what the difference between DC and AC current is, or AC power. Well, let me get this way. I got a little bit of vertigo, so please bear with me. This one up, hmm, I guess I can't, can't do that. Well, the left, uh, upper left picture there is DC. As you can see, the zero reference is below, and then you're, it's a constant voltage sets there just constantly. The one on the right upper is, the a, is one AC, is this AC circuit, and that's one sine wave. There would be one, one, uh, one hertz, okay? One complete cycle. In America, we're 60 cycles. In Europe, you're 50 cycles. If you travel, you'll find that that, that will be a problem with anything that depends upon the frequency and motors do. Okay, now with that sine wave, you have different things. Here, we say we have 120. We do. That's what we call average or resist, uh, DC resistance equivalent. That's the 120, but my peak voltage is 170. So when I say I got 120, I do, but I also have 170 volts, top, top and bottom. Now, if I run that through a, a rectifier to get a DC voltage, because that's what changes AC to DC, I'm going to wind up with about 90 volts, because that's what most of your DC motors, if you got 240, it's 180, if it's, two, if it's 110, it's 90 volt DC motor. Okay, now the, uh, the one on the bottom there is just a various, two, two different pictures showing three phase. How many of you have three phase stuff? Okay, wow, that's good. I didn't figure there'd be anybody. Um, do you want me to cover, are you interested in me covering three phase? Yes. Um, I don't know a thing about electricity. What? Exactly, is that up and down thing? This? In the <laughs> I'm going to give you about a three to five hour course in about 30 seconds, okay? Okay. This is zero voltage. And as I turn, here's my, arm, my armature on my generator. And here's my magnetic lines of force always run from north to south. And I'm turning, here is my conductor. As I put a conductor through a magnetic field, it generates a voltage in that conductor. So here's my magnetic field, here's my conductor which would be not anything different than a wire. It's just a wire, and there are lots of them on a real generator. I'm going to push it through there. I point my finger in the direction of the north to south. I point my thumb in the direction I am going to move the conductor, and the current is going to flow in the direction of my finger. In this case, if this is moving up, the current is coming out of the board. Now, guess what? It goes over here, doesn't it? As soon as it goes over there, I got to turn my finger around and the current's going the other way. This is right here, is here, here is there, here is there, here is there. The current has changed direction. So instead of having a positive voltage, I have a negative voltage on, as I go on the other side. That's called alternating current. Yep. But I just realized 
then you cannot really have a generator for direct current. Can yes, you? you can. Just depends yeah. upon you wire it, the way it's wired. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, that's uh, on a DC, DC generator, you got brushes in there, which actually has acts as a switch to keep reversing the wire. <laughs> okay. <laughs> or you Rabbit have a hole. fire, which does the same thing. Yeah, another, another three hour, four hour. <laughs> And all the way around, commentator. I'm going to put a brush here and a brush here. So anytime this is moving down, I don't care when, I am always picking up the same, same uh, current flow. And anytime over here, that's a DC. That's a DC generator. It's also going to be used on a DC motor. Okay. All right. Uh, any other questions? I'm not trying to short you on this, but whew, this is it's a fairly fairly com fairly comprehensive course subject matter. Okay, uh, where were we? Three phase, <laughs> three phase is the same thing, except I have 120 degrees. Apart, and then I'm going to go this, and then as I don't have but two colors, I'll go 120. Here would be 360. Here's 180. I'm looking for 240. Here's another one. Now the advantage of that is I have a I don't have as much uh, time between the peaks. As you notice up there, we're I'll switch back. Yeah, well, That's your camera. That's our camera crew. Oh, okay. <laughs> the same, the same I'm, I'm thinking, my God, where did I get that for that slide? <laughs> yeah. yeah, okay, that's fine. That's fine. Okay. Uh, but the I don't have as much time between it. I get more constant. Uh, 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 power adjust, but also I don't have to have something that's going to start that motor. It will. It always has a start uh, start capability. Okay, we'll cover that one. Advantages of dis at DC and disadvantages of DC. First of all, I don't have a DC motor here. DC motors is going to are going to have <coughs> permanent magnets or electromagnets. All I got to do to get electromagnet is wrap wires around a, well I couldn't do that, but around, I could do it here, I can make a screwdriver, like wrap wires around that, many, many coils, and that would make an electromagnet, one end would be north, one end would be south. So all I got to do is, I do, is to make an electromagnet or a permanent magnet. Permanent magnets are, are generally bigger. Well, the motors are going to be bigger. Um, so, but they will develop, a DC motor will develop higher torque than an AC motor, significantly. They, they are also good speed control. I was trying to think of anything that really requires you to be within one RPM or something like that, or very, very precise in, in a woodworking environment. I can't think of anything. If you do, then DC would be your, be your much better option. They're easily reversed. You remember I talked about the field and the, the uh, uh, motion of the motor. Same is true when I apply it uh, of generating power. Same is true when I'm using it as a motor. And again, the direction of the current <coughs> And the direction of the magnetic field is going to cause that motor to spin. And so I can, on a DC, all I have to do is reverse the armature windings, wires, that's just two wires, reverse them. Motor runs the other way, reverse them, motor runs the other way. Very on easy. Elevators? I'm sorry? On, on elevators yeah, and I don't really have to do the reversing of the wires, I can do it by switching. In other words, just a crossover switch. So it's pretty easy. 
The other reason there are great advantages, I already own one. Why would I buy another one? Darn thing, darn, the only reason I would is the darn thing is dirty. I have to keep changing the brushes in it, etc. And uh, that's one of the disadvantages. The commentator wear, wear. <coughs> the commentator was what I drew here a minute ago. That will eventually wear down. A lot of you are old enough to remember when we had uh, uh, generators on cars, and uh, it used to have a, uh, every now and then have to take them in, and they had a, a hacksaw blade, and check the, check the windings on it, it would it tap, yeah. Uh, and the brushes were, they're generally larger, motors are generally larger, and if I'm doing it in a commercial application, I'm going to, have, if I don't use permanent magnets, I'm going to have to run four wires versus two wires. I got to run <clears throat> two wires to the field, two wires to the armature. And it requires some form of power in the form of a DC. That's either a rectified power or a battery. There's a DC motor. Got a battery. Only, prob only thing is, is you don't think of that as a DC motor. Okay. Next slide, please. AC. The ACs are cleaner, less maintenance. Matter of fact, I haven't, well, I have to. I, I, I cleaned the motor up. But uh, other than that, it was no problem. Reliable, it is. It's very reliable. <coughs> Cost. For constant speed motors, they're really not near as expensive as they used to be. Don't get me wrong, you're not going out and buy a dozen of them. But, but the variable speed motor, that is a little more costly because it has to have extra windings to get rid of, particularly if you're running down around 10 hertz. Uh, some motors won't run there. They'll do what they call spoking, and they will just rotate and it may be fast, but you'll still see that spoking effect. And that causes heat, and so they have to have, uh, VFD uh, motors have to have a little more insulation, a little more cooling capability. So, and, but AC motors are smaller by quite a bit than a DC motor. Disadvantage, less starting torque. We're getting better on it than we used to be. When we first changed over to AC motors, good heavens. It was, I mean, you almost had to get a, I remember we used to. We had a DC motor to get it up to, tor up to speed, and then you shifted it over to AC. <clears throat> but it does require some method for starting. And I use this as an example. If I have a, Magnetic, this is my armature, this is my field. If I have, so the motor stops like so, guess what? I plug it in and it isn't going to do anything. It's going to sit there and look at me. May hum a little bit, but, so I got to do something. So I have, there's several different things I can do. I can put a capacitor, that capacitor in the circuit and shift, have a starting winding, have starter windings in there, and shift that start by up to 90 degrees. And it will then start in that direction every time, every time. Is, is there an additional winding to accomplish Yes, that? yes. And I do, not, but We'll, we'll get to that in just a minute. But I don't want that winding to stay in the circuit all the time. Right. Okay. Another cape, another one on, yeah. So a capacitor stores electricity and then gives it a little jolt, a little off center, and that's essentially how it works? Well, when I, when I have the switch, the start switch closed and power the, the, through the capacitor, it then is going to power these two start circuits which is going to be shift the, shift the motor 
to give it a start. Yeah, it does. A capacitor does not store electricity. Though. It does store voltage. Voltage. Okay. Voltage. Um, Eli the Iceman. Eli, good Lord, we, how many years ago did I learn that one? <coughs> Voltage leads current. We're, in the, we're about a three-day course now. Uh, Voltage leads current in the fact that I have my If it was ideal, I would have this situation. Voltage would be, voltage and the current sine wave would set right on top of each other. However, when I put an inductor, a motor, in there, voltage, and let's say this is the current one, will lead the, will lead the, uh, voltage will lead the current by 90, up to 90 degrees. When I do that, then that will give me this shift, okay? Now, when I do the ice portion, it's just the reverse. Current leads voltage. So, when I do the capacitor, I just do the opposite. That's a short course. Yeah. You just covered, we basically covered quite a bit of the next slide. But the symptoms of a bad capacitor is one, motor doesn't start. It hums, but it doesn't know the tune. It just sort of sets there. And if it sets there long enough, then things begin to smell. Yeah, it gets start, it'll get hot. Or it may start in either direction. Darn thing, you know, the saw is going and the saw blade is coming. Wait a minute, that saw blade's going that way. Shut it off, check it out, turn it back on, it's going the right way. Well, I don't know, it must, been, must be me watching that. Turn it off, turn it back on, it's going backwards again. Got a bad, bad capacitor, I can guarantee you. Now, Another way to look at to look look at them is to simply pop the capacitor off, and it doesn't take much. Make sure that you put, first of all, before you ever work on a motor, what do you do? Pull the power. You only forget that once or twice. Then there may be still some voltage. Yeah. And you won't forget that but once or twice either. That's what we used to do in electronic school in the Air Force. In new class, we would tell them, we'd take a bunch of capacitors, charge them up, throw them on the table. And then we'd say, get them, this place looks like a pig stin. get it cleaned up. And they'd go around and blah, 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 blah. But that's a capacitor. Take a look at it. Is it bulged? Ooh, boy, it stinks like rotten, bad stuff, because it's, it's going to stink like burnt asphalt. So now, we didn't used to have little release pressure, gate, pressure uh, places on these. The ones that's been made in the last probably, and again, I'd say 10 years, they have which, if this bulges, it's going to bulge on this end, and it's going to take it out of the circuit. In other words, it will physically, inside, break the circuit in there. So there's all sorts of um, ways of telling that a capacitor is bad. There was a time of where a while back where the, <coughs> my voice will hold out, that you would have a, some unscrupulous air conditioning people would come out and they would say, hmm, yeah, you got a bad compressor, that'll be $622 or whatever. And 10 minutes later, they're out the door and said, we got it in, we changed it, and it's all ready to go. Whoa, 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 whoa. You changed a compressor in 10 minutes? Uh, I don't think so. All they done was change a capacitor. 
and the capacitor cost about twenty dollars, maybe depends upon what it is. And somebody made a little bit of money that day, at your expense. This is what you would do if I said about reversing the direction of the motor, <coughs> an AC motor. Or did I get to that part? Oh, only replace if you have one. Make sure that you replace it with the same capacitor. You can buy a capacitor, it's a run capacitor, or one for a different motor. Make sure the microfarad rating is the same. And make sure that it's, uh, you know, f physically will fit in the, in the container. A lot, this last summer, because it was so very hot, a lot of the air conditioners had capacitor problems because they, they overheat, the, they, they're mounted inside that little con uh, thing at the, at the air conditioner. Uh, a motor capacitor will be labeled Volts AC, VAC, where polarity doesn't matter, but a uh, capacitor used in electronics has a plus and minus, and you do not want to substitute, because it will not take the reverse voltage. Those are called electrolytic and electronics, and there's a different, well, uh, the symbol is different, but electronic symbol is different, but you're absolutely right. The, uh, but you're talking, you're not talking generally about something this big for electronics, but might, but you're right. Okay, if you have, if when you get it wired back up, and you have said okay, I, everything is fine. This one tells me it's going to turn one direction or another. And it doesn't turn that direction. Just reverse these two leads. Yeah. You know, you got to put the capacitor on the other side of the line. Just reverse those two leads when we do it. It does on this motor. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that. It does on this motor. It says so right there. Okay. Okay. There's another one, a shunt motor is one that's hardwired. You can't do anything with it. It's, it's made that way, okay? Some motors have two capacitors, a, run motor, a start capacitor and a run capacitor. The run, start capacitor will drop out and when the cutout switch cuts, uh, drops it out and the run capacitor will stay in the circuit for the whole, for the whole time. Run capacitors mainly to, to provide uh, more efficient running operation for the motor. It also will, give, it will help some for if there's load drops, if the load increase. Okay? Not much so. Okay, while I'm talking about this one, I'm going to pop this, this one apart because I think we're going to run into a time bind. I'm going to take this motor apart to show you the the uh, uh, cutout switch. This is one that will give you a problem with dust. This motor came off of my saw and uh, you know, there are those of us that are, I, I call it dumb and then there's some of us that are stupid. And I fit in the last category in the fact that I did not. There we are. I did not put some lubrication. This happens to be a bearing drive, bearing motor, and I didn't notice that. And I, so I wound up running the, bu the. I mean, a bushing motor, and I wound up running the um, uh, bushings dry, and. It got harder and harder. It got more and more. Um, yeah, little oil cap. Yeah. But the cutout switch in here happens to be one of the things that that if you don't, if it doesn't cut out. It will keep the start windings in, and if the start windings stay in, it will overheat the motor. OK, 
they list, they're on the end of the shaft on, and on the pulley end and they're going to have a spring counterweight that they're, they're going to throw out and the spring counterweight and we'll get to that part in a minute I did I started to take this apart earlier and I said no I want to, want to take it apart so that you all that haven't did you have to mark the bell housings on that? Pardon me? Did you mark the bell housings on each end as to no. relate to No, I haven't, but I, I could. Uh, I, I seldom do. You know, the, but you're right, they you have to play with it a little bit afterwards if you don't. Usually have a little alignment. Yeah, there's alignment plugs. So this one wound up, that is frozen on there. Now, I could, I could have wound up taking this to machine shop, had it pulled off, but there's a whole bunch of reasons. By the time I'd done that, the cost of that and everything, I said, nah, I don't want to do that. But there's my cutout switch. As it go, as it accelerates, these these fly out. They move out, cutting the switch off, taking the start windings out of the circuit. Now, it's fairly easy. This is the inside of the motor. Those are the. This is your thermal overload. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not used to having this. This is a thermal overload, and it resets itself. Okay. Okay. Now this is, these are called finger mashers. You go, you're putting it back together, and it'll mash your finger pretty well. It'll do a good job on it. Now, when it's when the motor starts, listen to it. If it has a capacitor on it, listen to it. At about 25%, and that's going to come quick, you should hear a click, and it, it drops the uh, starter windings out. When it comes back down, about 75%, I'm sorry, about 75%, 65 to 75%. As it uh, is coming back down, around 25%, it should click again. In other words, it closes those starter windings back. Okay. And those, those, those numbers I give you are not, they depend upon, a lot upon the um, uh, vendor, the manufacturer. Okay, for speed control, I vary the armature voltage on a DC motor, simply stated. I don't care how, how what else. If the, we, don't, we don't even address the field at this time, that's another subject. But the DC drive, You've got to have a DC drive, and the DC drive will uh, vary the voltage uh, by, uh, as you tell it, to increase or decrease speed. Voltage is balanced by the counter electromagnetic force. We're not going into that either, but that, that is what, when I say, okay, go to speed 50%, 50%, it, I now have more requirement to increase then counter electromagnetic force is going to come back and say, okay, when I get to 50%, the two of them balance out. That then means that I'm having as much re re resistance as I do increase. That's what's happening on the wave? Like, I mean, that's a good example of a tool. No, variable. not really. <laughs> I'm sorry. This is, this one here is a direct, is no, uh, belt, you change the belts. This one, it's easy to tell. You're going, if you have a variable frequency drive, in other words, you're going to, you have an inverter, meaning you're going to change AC to DC, you're going to have cooling fins. If you'll notice, you've got cooling fin, metal cooling fins here. 
they will tell that will basically tell you that you have a DC you're changing AC to DC and then inverting it back to AC at a different frequency adjustable frequency Pardon me? That is a complicated circuit board in there that takes care of all. Yeah, you don't don't go there. Yeah. <laughs> That's a five-day class. Yeah. <laughs> One of the things about it is the drive is relatively cheap. Let's go to AC. Vary the frequency. Why do I vary the frequency? Change I want a different speed, and I'll get to that in the next slide. But <laughs> I'm going to, by varying the frequency, I can change the speed. By varying the voltage to the armature, if it's a universal motor, like this one is, then I change the speed. Variable frequency drives cost more. When the first variable frequency drive that I ever saw, I ever was part of purchasing, was about $18,000 for a five horse motor. Alan Bradley, 1334. Wow. No one's going to pay that kind of money for very, very much. Well, now you can buy a, easily a 10 horsepower VFD drive motor. Again, uh, Alan Bradley, 1336, uh, etc., for probably less than $150. So they've come down a lot. Okay. Next slide. I talked a minute ago about I want to change the speed on a variable frequency drive. First of all, on a non-variable frequency drive, first of all, <coughs> to find out what the synchronous speed of the motor is, I do the one, I take 120 and multiply it by the hertz and divide it by the number of poles of the motor. Four pole motor, you're going to have 1800 RPM. Two pole motor, you're going to have 3600. Now one of the problems with that is you're not going to have that. That's actually the RPM that the synchronous or the rotation of the magnetic field is actually happening you're going to have a slip about 5 to 7 percent. That gives you where well, you got 1725, 1750 on your motor speeds. That's where you're getting that from. Or 3450, 3500 in that area. Okay. Electrical slip is the difference between the, what the rotating magnetic field is and what the armature is. Okay. If I didn't have any, I wouldn't have any energy. I wouldn't have any power. <clears throat> there is a motor called a, that's uh, called a universal motor, and it's called will take DC or AC. This happens to be one of them. How can I tell? Got uh, br brushes. That happens to be one of them. Why? Got brushes. Okay. Both the field and the uh, armature are. Um, uh, wired in series. Doesn't make any difference to you, but, the, they, but I can run them on AC or DC that way. They're generally not, you're not probably going to find one, unless it's a sync motor, but uh, you're not going to find one that's in a you know, 100 horsepower or something like that. But the problem is you're going to have brushes on them. No other way. <coughs> Now, somebody asked me about, uh, I believe you asked me about uh, name, nameplate, who was it? Somebody asked me about nameplate data. Well, I put the, I'm going to cover a little of it, but also I got a handout here that has the, and anyone to please take one if you wish, there are, it covers what the nameplate, what that data is, what it means when it says voltage, Okay, what the voltage is going to be. Um, 
if it's uh, uh, horsepower. Uh, it may give you horsepower or it may give you, they're, they're now starting to put on watts. Well, 740, watt, 740 watts is one horsepower, simply stated. So, you know, you can convert it that way. Okay. Now, oh, I'm running out of time, so we'll, I'll leave you, leave you that the, uh, the, to look over the nameplate data there. Now, one of the things that you also have <coughs> is enclosures. This is a totally enclosed. This is a, called a, a, a drip proof. And again, it tells you what the requirements are. And again, a handout for that. And I have 20 of them, so if you need any more, that's fine. A minute ago, I said, OK, we'll talk about this later. You bought you a new motor. Guess what? Boy, I'd like to be able to put that thing on something, but it doesn't look like it's going to fit anything. Well, every motor has a mounting, has the um, uh, mounting in, uh, detail with it. Like this motor here is, uh, let's see, frame is the G56. Okay, so I'd go in here and I'd look for a G56 motor. Can't find, and that particular motor I can't find on here. Why? It's a special motor for, for Sears, made by Sears. They, didn't, they put their own, their own nomenclature on it. However, if you buy a bell door or something else, some other motor, they will have, by requirement, they will have motor size on it. Now, that tells you what, the, what this pattern is. Not here, but on the motor. If, if it's a detach, detached, then it isn't a, the, that's the reason this G56 is here. It's a detached mounting. Okay? Okay. And again, uh, if you're going to buy a new motor, you're going to need that and that and the information off of there in order to get, get what you get exact motor that you want. Okay? Okay. Yeah, when I took this one in, well, I didn't take this one with me. I knew what I was looking for. I took a look at it and I said, whoa, 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 whoa. Uh-uh. Let's give me a tape measure. I gotta do some measurements. Measured. Yeah, I don't I don't need this anymore. I can the motor mount will give me that. So I got so I got that. But yeah, it's a good idea to take the motor with you. Now this name plate on the next one here, next slide is off of that motor there. Tells you it's 60 hertz. Tells me it's not a variable speed right there. Volts 115, 4 amps. Ah, well, well, is that motor working very well? I don't know. Boy, I tell you, sure smells hot a lot. You can get one of these. It's a watt meter. They're about, uh, I think they're less than $20. But just plug in here and plug in here, and it'll tell you in a few minutes. And if I'm running, this is six point, uh, this one's 4.5 amps. If I'm running up around five amps, four amps, five amps, whoa, I'm up there where it's probably going to start heating up. Why? What am I doing? Am I pulling something? Do my, <coughs> excuse me, am I pulling something that is going to give me a, uh, I can fix. In other words, it's I got bad bearings in what I'm trying to drive or whatever. Okay. Do some motors operate at, a, at just standard uh, 200 degrees. I mean, they, their normal operating temperature is hot. I, I I judge a motor this way. If I'm going out into the field and I'm uh, I'm not in a real air conditioning environment, a real cold environment, I will walk up to it and I'll do that first, make sure it's not too hot, and then I'll go, and i put my hand on it. If I can put my hand on it, fine. I've seen motors that you couldn't even put that. And boy, I tell you, those are the ones that usually are going to be smoking before very long, okay? 
Uh, again, we see on there 1,720 RPM. Well, that's a, a four-pore motor, I know that. Uh, phase, single phase, meaning it's not uh, the three-phase. And you ask about the two-phase motor. <laughs> two-phase motors were basically around the turn of the century up to about 1920 last time, last, not this, <laughs> 1920, yeah, uh, were, they, they shifted the power by 90 degrees to get the second phase. It really wasn't a balanced phase power, but they shifted it by 90 degrees. But they don't make them anymore. They do, you have three phase, why do I not have three phase, or uh, five phase, seven phase, nine phase? Repetition? I don't need it. Like it, it. Not only that, I'd have to have a winding for each one of them. I'd have to have a motor this big for, for my sha electric shaver, you know. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Somebody asked me about what the service factor was. Service factor is going to be listed on your on the name plate. Service factor is a rating electric motor that is a multiplier that indicates how far beyond its official or name plate power rating a motor can be driven before overheating. In other words, if I have a 10 horsepower motor, I could run that up to for a period of some, and I had a 1.5 service factor. I could run it up to about 1.5, 11.5 horsepower for a short period of time. That's sort of like a surge type thing. Okay. And, yes? Uh, mind if I interject something? Not at all. Please do. Important. If a motor is not running at its rated speed, it's going to heat up. Like on a table saw, you got a dull blade, you're trying to force the cut, you're lugging down the motor as the motor decreases in RPM, it's going to get hot, it's going to overheat, and you're going to burn it up. Because the motor is also a generator, and it's, while a motor is running, it's generating a current in the opposite direction of what you're applying, and if there's no load on it, it kind of balances out and is drawing very little current. But as soon as you start loading it down, the well, current that is generating decreases and the current coming applied to it increases and you can burn up the winding real quick by lugging down a table saw motor or any other motor. Very true, very true. Somebody asked me about power factor. Power factor is nothing more than we get back to the two curves. Let's say that's voltage. Again, the idea would be laid right over the top of it. Power factor. Let's see, this is Eli. This is voltage is, going to, is leading current. And therefore, my power factor is less than 100%. Stop and think. What does, it, what does the uh, utilities uh, companies want? They want to you to pay for the energy you're using. They're delivering a voltage, they're delivering a current. If you get these spread apart, then you're, you're not, you either, right at some point, at some point, I'm at zero, but I got voltage. And at some point, I have current, but I have no voltage. I can't have voltage, can't have flow. If I get below about 90, most power companies will start asking you to do something. 90 uh, power factor of 0.9. Get down to 85, they'll be knocking on your door. Now, how do I get that? Only in a manufacturing environment of where you have a lot of motors, induction motors. These are called in, uh, our, uh, uh, coils for all practical purposes. Yeah, they're, so. How do they know? Uh, they monitor that very carefully, and uh, at the at their fa at their generation distribution plants. Uh, also, if they start seeing you uh, drawing a lot of current with your voltage 
not not being uh, they have let me let me back up a minute they have a a watt meter on every on all three phases of their power and they know exactly what you're drawing and whether it's current or voltage and so therefore they're not going to let you get by with that it's in the meter. It needs to be theoretically balanced. Yes. That would be the ultimate. That would be the ideal. It never will be. Yeah, but I'm saying the yeah. optimum. Yeah. Let's talk about when to repair a trash a motor. Well, a lot has to do with the size of the motor. If it's this one, now Dremel happens to be, uh, I can send it back to uh, Dremel. This happened to be a Craftsman. I'll throw it away. Um, if the cost is half, if the repair cost is half of the new price, uh, I'll, th I'll probably throw it away, more than uh, half of it. If it's less than half, then I'll insist that they put in new bearings or bushings, whichever it's going to take. If it goes with a cord, make sure it comes back with a cord, because you may not get it wired up the way it's supposed to. Okay. Uh, double check the footprint. Make sure that the footprint is so that when you get it back, it'll mount correctly. Uh, be sure the RPM is the same. Uh, this is a 3400 RPM for the table saw. I would have suspected it's 1700. Well, but by the time you look at the, the uh, belt re reduction, that, that explains why it's uh, why the 3400? Why did it fail? Was it the wrong application, i.e., open versus closed? Uh, I'll tell you in a moment. I cleaned that up. That was completely packed up with dust. It would hardly move. Okay. Um, do you need high torque for starting? And you're probably going to need a DC motor. What was the amp draw versus the rating? Again, if you don't have any idea of that, uh, was motor running hot? Was, was it adapted for variable uh, speed by a triac or uh, SCR device? That then means it's going to, if you have taken, you can get, what well, they call it, two phase, three phase motor, three phase power out of a uh, uh, single phase by taking uh, triacs and firing uh, and SCRs and firing them in the late half of the of the cycle, but it's going to spoke on you, and if you particularly if you load it down, it's going to spoke. So, and or does it just not start? Then you, you have a start capacitor problem. Okay. Um, VFD and harmonics. If you have a VFD like that one is, um, you're going to generate fifth harmonics, guaranteed. Bellus lights generate third harmonics. What are harmonics? Harmonics are multiple of the base, for, base harmonic 60 cycle. So third harmonic is uh, 180 har uh, hertz, fifth harmonic is 300 hertz. Symptoms, if you have large motors, computers will reboot. Equipment does strange things. In other words, other equipment starts, starts to lose, lose data, stuff like that. Printer will cycle. These things can happen in your home, too. Don't get me wrong. I'm talking about usually the, you think of these happening in a big manufacturing plant. They can, but probably aren't going to happen if you're talking about a uh, you know, half-horse motor or something like that. Okay, I've, sorry I've tried to give you a lot of information in a hurry. This is one that they sold here, they sell, I don't know if they still sell it or not. It's this router speed control. It says very specifically, must be used on a universal motor. So all this is doing is varying the voltage to the armature. Simply, that's all it is. It's a rheostat, adjusting the voltage to the armature. Um, 
B and D, who is a company I used to work for when I was in the scale business, they they were also uh, a lot of other things, bearings and drives. They were kind enough to give me those, give, uh, let me use that display of motor. Uh, they also give me some handouts here for you, um, if anyone would like one. There, there's offices all, all over. There's one in Norcross. I'm not. I'm not saying I like them. I, they sell motors too, and lots of other things. And so I'm not pr promoting them. I'm just saying. But at the same time, they were nice enough to let me have this, uh, set this. Um, any questions? A lot of uh, tools, maybe some of the more expensive ones, are able to wire them at 110 or 220. Yep. Okay. As far as your shop and the actual cost of your utilities, is it cheaper for you to run them as a 220 tool? What's the advantage of one over the other? Uh, probably overall. I would run them at 220 if I could, but the really, unless you're measuring with micrometer, you probably are not going to have, uh, as far as cost is involved, not that, you will save some maybe, but it won't be uh, a great deal. Um, however, generally speaking, if I have 110 volts, and I'm using 5 amps, let's make it 10 amps, it's easier to... 10 amps at 220, I'll draw 5 amps. And that's, that's not exactly right, there's, there's a little bit of, there's some variance there, but generally, but when I multiply these two together, any way you look at it, I'm going to get up 1100 watts. Okay, now, I know in Europe it's using 220 50 cycle, and overall my utilities weren't bad, yeah. you know, depending on where you're at. Um, I think that was the amount you used and the cost of the per, per kilowatt. But um, I would go the 220 route. Uh, there is a little, how do I say this? There is an advantage, a little bit of advantage, but. Uh, Yeah. You're going. Uh, there's a whole, 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 whole new set of rules coming into play now. You're coming in. You're coming in with 220. In other words, all I'm doing when I'm at the house, at your house, all I have done, all I have done, is I brought in two lines to a neutral. This one has this phase, and this one has that phase. The, the reverse. They split it. Now, young, dumb, inexperienced, and there's a couple other words I could think of, me said, ah, good heavens, I'm going to run a, a cord out here, and I'm going to come off of here and I'm going to come off of here, and I'm going to put, uh, let's see, I could put a plug here and a plug here, and I could run stuff off of that. Well, if I can do that, then I probably could take this and this and do that, and the next thing that I done, I wound up with 220, thinking I had 110 wired to 110 plug. And my learning curve went just about like that. It didn't take me but one time to, to figure out that that was not where I needed to go. But that was many years ago and not too far away. Yeah. Would, the pow would, the pow would the tools themselves be more, would, would they work better? At, I've always read that they would work better at 220. They are designed to be able to, when I talk about voltage, I have to keep in mind that if I walked, if this was a dry room and I walked up and touched your ear, bam, it's going to spark, right? Voltage, voltage is going to cross across any insulator. 
all I want to do is guarantee that at 220, I have enough insulation so that motor is guaranteed to be able to handle to, for, by insulation purposes, particularly 220 volts. I prefer to run at 220 if I had. Each line is rated for 120 volts, and if you hook them in parallel, it's 110. If you hook them in series, it's 220. True. But I'm not gathering. I'm not gaining anything more, other than I'm using the other set of windings. Well, it's, it's using all of them anyhow. Yeah. It's yeah. Just over there in series or parallel. Yeah. And most so. Of them say yeah. Which which would you prefer to run a two twenty or one hundred and ten, Jack? Pardon? Which would you prefer to run one hundred and ten or two twenty? Well, if you're running on two twenty, your extension cord only has half the current going through it, so it's not going to heat up as much. That's true. Hadn't thought about that one. So it, it's much safer safer on your wiring and everything to be drawing less current because it's current that heats up a wire and causes sure. bad connections and everything, not the voltage. Yeah. I have I I have never run a, an extension a 220 extension cord for something though I hadn't thought about that. Yeah. I have a little uh, eight inch Craftsman table saw, mm -hmm. and when I turn it on, the bl the the blade slightly kind of jerks back, and then it just hums. It doesn't move. And then I start to smell burning, like you were talking about. So it sounds like it might need a new capacitor. Yep. Almost guaranteed. Take and, well, take a stick. I was going to say take and spin the, but take a stick, and give the wheel a spin. The no, the no, no, blade. It has, um, and does it run? It then. Has pulleys on both sides, so the side that doesn't have the belt on it. Okay. I, I tried to spin that to get it going, but it wouldn't. It wouldn't. It wouldn't run then. Uh, okay. No. Then it may not be the capacitor. Wrap a cord around the spindle. So yeah. Yeah. Don't and then and then wrap the other end around your finger. <laughs> I don't think I, if it won't run either way after you give it a spin, it's probably is not the. Uh, well, I was mentioning that earlier about the back EMF because I know somebody who burn up three small table saws like that because it's too cheap to go get his blade sharp. Yeah. Let me let me mention something about a carbide blade. It may, it may feel sharp to your finger, but it's actually not sharp to the wood. Because let's, let's take one little piece of carbide like this in your blade, and as it gets dull, it wears off here to your finger. You're still feeling this sharp edge right here. But when it's going into the wood, instead of being a sharp edge facing the wood, it's a rounded edge facing the wood. So it still feels sharp to your finger, but it's not sharp, and it needs to be resharpened. But these uh, fruit, uh, or the bright uh, reddish orange blades, you can buy at Home Depot. You can buy a blade, new blade, as cheap as you can get it resharpened. So, yeah. <laughs> but if you if you were going to go, and if I wanted to get a capacitor or even replace the motor eventually. Uh, is there a, a place you'd recommend to go uh, get a capacitor or a motor? Or First thing may I suggest if you, I don't think it's a capacitor if it won't run either direction. Right. However, I'm not saying that's not the case. But uh, if you're going to get a capacitor, may I suggest that you, first of all, go to a, a, a motor electronics place and do not tell them that it is, they will at, probably ask you, is this for a, a furnace? Absolutely do not, no matter what it is, do not say yes. Um, because there is a law in Georgia that says that no one can uh, deal, uh, do anything with uh, heat furnace heating and cooling stuff, except those licensed with low voltage license. Uh, 
But if you tell them it's for a lathe or a saw, they seem to they'll sell it to you then. Yeah. Do you have uh, And then uh, my dad saved a whole pile of old motors. <laughs> so, uh, they sell pretty good now. So to test them, do I just hook a power cord up to them and turn on the power strip and see what happens? Uh, yeah. And look at the plate. Maybe one of those motors will match Yeah, your that's what I'm thinking. Yeah, you have. You want me to take a look at that one? I've got a motor here. I don't know what's wrong with it. I know the on off switch is pushed on the inside of here. If somebody wants to take this and play with it. I'll take it. I'll fix it for you. I got If you fix it, we'll raffle it off sometime at one of the meetings. I'll, I'll say I'll put it this way. I'll look at it for you. Let me. Uh, if it requires a new motor, you're on your own. <laughs> uh, any other questions? No. If, uh, if you shorten the pamphlets or whatever. Thank you. All right.